Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Chief Executive of TSA, Alison Skirfield. A warm welcome to you all. I'm honoured and delighted to welcome you to the 2018 Technology Enabled Care Conference here in Birmingham for the third time. With over 800 delegates, it's set to be a fantastic event for two days. May I firstly take this opportunity to thank our main sponsors, Tunstall, Berkelsan, Mobius, Centra Key, Motec, CSL, Possum and Grandcare. And new to 2018, our content partner, the Innovation Agency, and for the first time ever, our international partner, WDTM. This year's conference, Connecting People, Improving Lives, rose from our 2017 White Paper. The White Paper examined the challenges and the opportunities relating to analog to digital and how continued access to reliable communications is vital to our tech systems and services. The white paper also identified the opportunities that digital brings. Positive disruption, allowing us to create new services, models and continuous innovation to help ease the pressures on our stretched health and care economy. Digital also improves outcomes for individuals through the emergence of proactive and personalised care, service integration and self-management. We set five responses to the white paper last year, and the first was to work with the regulator Ofcom. As promised, we've stayed really close to Ofcom and communication providers by engaging in relevant working groups and consultations. Our aim is, of course, to help commissioners and service providers to build robust plans and navigate the digital shift. Tomorrow you will hear from Hugh Saunders, Director of Networks and Infrastructure at Ofcom. He will update you on the current position of the analog to digital shift and the outputs from our collaborative work. Our second commitment was to lobby UK governments. Paul Burstow and I have been working throughout the year meeting ministers and government officials of all UK member states, raising the profile and credibility of the sector and sharing the white paper and its challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. We have all been very aligned to the, the key principles of the Prime Minister's industrial strategy and formed a strong consortia to respond to the healthy agent challenge. Caroline Dynage, Minister of State for Care, will be here on stage tomorrow, setting out her ambitions and a call to action for the tech sector. Our third commitment to engage with the care regulators. The Quality Care Commission, CQC, have continued collaborative work with TSA to ensure how the public and people using technology-enabled care can be assured of its safety and quality, both now and in the future. Our continued work is to give clarity to inspectors and providers in defining the boundaries, gaps and overlaps between regulation and the TSA quality standards framework. We continue to work with the British Standards Institute, BSI, European Standards, Sen and Senelec. TSA is playing a key role in the development of the first European technical specification for the service chain of so social alarms. Work is well underway and it's now our ambition. This work will evolve into a European standard. Please visit the standards workshop tomorrow. You'll hear from our European partners and the alignment with the, the, the TSA quality standards framework. Our fourth commitment was to create a coherent plan. We have continued work on our digital roadmap. Our technical advisory group have been working on guidance documents. IP readiness will give stakeholders valuable information on the migration of communications to the IP-based telecoms infrastructure. Cellular communications, a document to give you practical advice on how to ensure best practice on the use of data sims for mobile devices. 
BT specification for testing. TSA defined a test plan that aims to provide confidence that alarm systems will operate successfully in an all IP environment. You can hear all the details in the technical workshop tomorrow. Chaired by Steve Sadler, he will outline our roadmap and ambitions. Our final commitment to work with tech service providers and services. Throughout the year, we've been working with you, our service providers, commissioners and solution providers to demonstrate the benefits of technology-enabled care and the outcomes that can be achieved for service users and their carers. Our main aim is to strengthen our voice and positioning with health and care colleagues. We've been working really closely with ADAS and TLAP, Think Local, Act Personal, to create a powerful collection of tech stories, caption very different, very personal stories, each painting a vivid picture of how technology-enabled care is transforming lives. The stories are told from the individual's perspective, using their experiences and their own unique circumstances to communicate what tech means to them. By giving a voice to people, already using a wide range of technology to enrich their lives, this resource offers commissioners and practitioners a case for change. The key message is technology is just a means to an end. The end, in the words of the CARE Act, is promoting well-being of individuals. Just buying bright, shiny devices is not the answer. But by focusing on the outcomes that matters to people, technology can be life-enabling. Glenn Garrard, president of ADAS, will be here on stage tomorrow updating on our collaborative work and his ambitions for reimagining social care. The launch of this amazing resource will take place at the National Children's and Adult Services Conference on the 14th of November. Over the next two days, our programme will inform, influence and inspire you all to listen to leading experts in the industry, engage in topical debate and take inspiration from our wide range of presentations. This morning you will hear from leaders of tech discussing new models of care, apps and direct care models. We will conclude today with a high-level interactive panel debate Focus on the move of tech to a consumer market. This brings me to the question, why are we all here today? We are all passionate and determined people and want to change the lives of individuals in our communities. We all have personal stories how technology is enriching lives. As many of you are aware, my dad was diagnosed with mixed vascular dementia nearly two years ago and my family have been using technology to support his bespoke care package to keep him out of residential care and hospital. The results have been remarkable. Since coming home from respite 18 months ago, following numerous hospital admissions, Dad has had no readmissions into hospital, no respite. But Dad is really lucky. He has benefited from my knowledge of technology-enabled care and the solutions it can bring. But many people in our communities are simply unaware. There are over 850 people, a thousand people living with dementia in the UK, and it's set to rise to over one million by 2021. It's a big problem for us all. I am sure many in the room have personal experience of dealing with dementia. Have you ever wondered what your loved ones experience every day. I visited the dementia bus in the exhibition hall this morning. I have just walked in my dad's world. He's scared, he's very isolated, and he's very confused. Please don't miss this amazing experience if you're a commissioner, a carer, a provider, or a solution provider. Following your visit, you will gain invaluable insight into the lives of people with the disease. 
It will empower you to rethink and reimagine care models and technology solutions. I'm using my own experience to emphasize how health and care is in need of urgent reform. We need a care system that provides consistently high quality, joined up care, regardless of an individual's health, their ability to pay, or their postcode. As I stand here today, it fills me with so much pride how the tech sector has truly evolved. I am sure you will all agree, from the minute you stepped into the iTech conference this morning, you were amazed at what is actually going on in the tech industry and what the future might hold for us all if we pull together, collaborate and deliver seamless solutions for people. As I go around the UK, I meet a lot of people who are benefiting from technology-enabled care, tailored to their own personal needs and wants.